Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Today, we are continuing our ongoing coverage of the war between the Russian Federation and Ukraine. Uh, today, heavy fighting continues uh, in and around Avdivka, with Russian forces continuing uh, its encirclement operation of Avdivka. Uh, very heavy fighting continues to take place with uh, continued uh, Russian offensive operations uh, in this area. We continue to see Russian offensive operations uh, to the north of Avdivka, running along the line of contact all the way to the north uh, near Kupiansk. Additionally, we continue to see uh, Ukrainian operations, uh, smaller raiding party type operations, crossing the uh, Dnepro River with the intent of raiding uh, Russian positions on the eastern bank of the uh, Dnepro River. Now, those operations continue. Uh, does it look like the U Ukrainians are going to achieve some sort of breakout in this area? No, absolutely not. Again, these are raiding operations uh, designed as a conciliatory prize uh, because of the failures of the Ukrainian offensive that took place south of Orkiv. And again, yes, the Ukrainian offensive failed in the Zaporizhia sector. Uh, they did not achieve the desired breakthrough and uh, operational goals of which they originally set out upon. Now, Additionally, I want to pose a question, and this is for the uh, both sides who watch this channel, and specifically towards the Russian military. Should the Russian military, should the Russian state, look at changes in terms of the defense minister and overall commander of Russian forces, Gerasimov. Have those two individuals performed in their duties in a manner in which the Russians had anticipated going into this conflict? Look, in any war, any war throughout history, countries have had to change and adapt. I go back to the American Civil War. Both Union and Confederacy made changes during that war. In World War II, changes were made in some of those very large-scale, high-tempo operations at the leadership level. And those changes resulted in battlefield changes. Now, <clears throat> again, I would have to say at this point, where the war sits right now, and then going back well over a year ago to the beginning of the conflict, the Russians did not believe that they would be sitting in this position where they are now. Now, you can go and you could say, well, look... It, it was the uh, direct support by the U.S. military in support of the Ukrainians that has led to where we are now. The problem is, you can't do that. As the Russian battlefield commander, you have to prepare for that. Going into this conflict, 
the Russians should have prepared better for the anticipated support by the United States to the Ukrainians. Now, the big miss for the Russians, at least I believe, was the technology gap. I don't believe the Russians fully understood the gap in doctrine and the gap in technology and just how behind the Russians are in those two sectors of the conflict. Now, I'm going to get some pushback on that, and I understand it, but it's a fact. The technology gap and the doctrine gap based on the ability to sense and shoot has the Russians behind the eight ball. It just does. So again, at the end of the day, the question has to be asked by Russian leadership, why wasn't the Russian military more prepared for what they were going to go up against? We have all heard the reports about the uh, the some of the Russian columns were actually preparing for victory parades in Kiev. Now look, was that true? Is that false? Difficult to say. Is it possible? Yeah, sure, it is possible. But again, many Russian units that entered Ukraine were not prepared for the level of resistance and the level of technology that was going to be engaging them. Furthermore, separating the technology, the will of the Ukrainians to fight, and fight very tenaciously. Especially when you hear reports about uh, Russian forces believing this, this was some sort of training mission. Now again, true, false, what have you, we just don't know. But the fact is, the conflict sets where it is. The conflict sets where it is. Now obviously, Russian doctrine is changing. I would say global war doctrine is changing because of this conflict. And you can't always prepare for the war of the future. But again, at some point, the Russian politi political leadership is going to have to ask the question, is Shoigu effective? Is Gerasimov effective? Does there need to be a change? Has that occurred? Does the Russian political leadership even have the ability to make that change? And I'm asking that question. So we'd love to hear it in the comment section. We will continue to watch. We will continue to observe. We will continue to report. As always, thanks for joining us. More to come very, very soon. Have a good day.